Hey guys, Mac Dabber here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the new patch, patch 2561. Uh, we got a couple sections here. It's actually kind of short. Our, let's go ahead and get into it. Our first section is uh, gameplay. There's six bullet points here. Our first bullet point, uh, item one is going to be bullets are not affected by air resistance and their velocity will gradually decrease. So the bullet drop system was interesting um, in the previous uh, game version. Uh, basically medium to long distances before the bullets could definitely travel farther than maybe what is comparable to other video games. I wouldn't say it was a significant advantage. I wouldn't say it's an absurd significant advantage, but it was definitely an advantage. Uh, adding this feature in here is going to add a second type of resistance, you're gonna have gravity as a resistance and now you have air resistance. And both of those things combined will overall decrease the velocity, um, you know, gradually over time, which means your medium to long range engagements are gonna feel different and you're gonna to have to account for that gradual decline of the bullet as it's traveling, especially at long ranges. So it's going to be interesting to see how sniper rifles and ARs are affected by this, especially going into uh, point two here, and then later on into point four. Sensitivity of two times scope in ADS mode increased by fifty percent. You know, go, make sure when you get in game to go ahead and test that when you get your times two scope. You may have to dial back your two times. ADS, especially if you play low sensitivities, um, this increased it by fifty percent is all it's saying. So if you're num if you're playing an ADS two scope sensitivity at let's say forty, and it increased it fifty percent, it's probably going to be really like forty five or something to that effect. So just you know, go back and test it. Get feel see for you what's comfortable. I am three here. When holding a grenade, you can press five to switch to a different available type of grenade. This is gonna be really good in team battles, um, probably some solos too. Uh, basically with this, in this type of situation, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be you know, engaged with the enemy and you're gonna wanna maybe, let's say you're gonna throw that smoke out there, you know, uh, blind them, give yourself some cover. But then you notice they're reloading. And because they're reloading, they're vulnerable. And you go, oh, this is the perfect moment. So you hit five, you switch that grenade, and you throw the grenade instead of throwing the smoke. You don't have to hit tab to switch to, <coughs> excuse me. You don't have to hit tab and switch to the grenade manually. There's a quick switch option now. That's great. That's definitely gonna change up uh, your engagements and how you approach things, knowing that you can quick switch your grenade now. Uh, item four and item one are both affected, uh, you know, affect each other. Item four, optimize the tick marks for the four times scope and the eight times scope. In the previous patch, it was very clear that your dash marks and your just your marks in general on the scope are not accurate. And uh, the game makes this kind of difficult by not having 100 meters squared like squared markers on your mini map it only shows the kilometer squared markers so it's it's actually even it's just hard to to judge the distance anyway but on top of that plus you have the the scopes were not lined up appropriately so you got you got two things working against you there you, it's hard to judge distance on the map it's hard to judge it in the game because you don't have anything to truly base it off of and then the third thing the most annoying thing was the fact that your dashes on the four time scope didn't line up to anything that was reasonable. You know, let's say I'm engaged in a, a 300 meter, you know, battle, which is medium to long range. You know, it, I should be using, in theory, I should be using that dash mark, that first dash as my my hit marker now but that wasn't the case you know it is very hard to tell where to use your tick marks 
you could get used to it, but optimizing these tick marks is going to make things a lot better um, when shooting that medium to long range distance. It's going to be interesting to see how ARs and snipers are affected by this. Moving on to point five, hit markers appear slightly further away from the center of the screen when shooting enemies to improve visibility while shooting. An example of this would be uh, you're shooting an enemy in a window and they're using the corner of the window. You go to shoot them and your the bloom on your hit marker is just right in your right in your face and you it's blocking, you know, that person's shoulder or their helmet. And it's it's making it more difficult for you to shoot them. So what they did was they, as it says, they moved those markers further apart. So in theory, it shouldn't be blocking anything anymore. Um, I don't know if I've ever really had a problem with this, but I could definitely see it being an issue. And in this item five, they kind of fixed that. Moving on to item six, hit markers displayed in red after killing an enemy. I'm not sure that's completely necessary. You already get two notifications that you killed your enemy, uh, one on the middle of the screen and then uh, one on the top right hand screen that tells everybody in the game that you killed somebody. But I guess now, especially in a team battle, you know, it's, it's gonna be easier for you to not confuse all the bodies <laughs> that are lying around. You know, if you're hitting a body and the hit marker turns red, oh, oh, that's not the guy we're supposed to be shooting because he's already dead. So, you know, it's, again, I don't know how useful that's going to be, but they they thought it was good enough to put in there. So we'll, we'll give them credit for that. Key and settings, added a toggle setting for running. You can press shift to toggle between run and walk. Uh, again, not sure how useful that's going to be. I always just kind of let up on my run key to auto walk into it. Maybe some people appreciate that setting using the, the auto run key and now they can toggle to switch it to walk automatically, especially when they hear an enemy. And so they want to just quickly keep going where they're going, but then just, just walk it and verify the sound surroundings and stuff. Animation section, optimize the bolting experience. We've definitely all been there where we go to jump in that window or jump out of that window and it just doesn't let us do it. Um, again, this doesn't say fixed, but it says optimized. So somewhere between their servers on their end and the in-game code is what was causing disruptions for the vaulting experience. And again, like I said, it doesn't say fixed, it says optimized. So that in general, I think it's reasonable to say that the problem will be significantly reduced, which is great. There's definitely been times I meant to jump in the window, couldn't jump and got killed. So. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be glad that that's a more reliable process. Client performance. Upon game launch, graphic settings will now automatically default based on the computer hardware. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be, especially because people go ahead and change their settings anyway. Um, in my one of my first videos, ROE optimization, right now, as it stands, low setting is going to be your best bet for this game. So if you are running a mid to high range PC like I am, if you want top FPS, you're gonna go ahead and switch that to low anyway. Even if it defaults to, to high or ultra for, for you, you're gonna switch it to low anyway. So I'm not sure this was necessary, but oh well. Uh, last item here is bugs fixed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, fix an issue that caused character's health points to show zero. That's great, you know. That has happened sometimes for me, but again, it doesn't really, it didn't really matter all that much because it's, it's really an aesthetic thing, you know. Obviously, if I'm still walking around, then I'm not dead, so my health isn't actually at zero. And I think a lot of people just go by the physical coloring of the bar to indicate how much health they have. And if they want to be more precise, they can go ahead and look at that number. So this would mess you up if you were in a crucial situation on if you needed to hit that first aid or if it was just going to be more optimal for you to hit the med kit. But you look down and you see zero. It's like, oh, 
uh, I don't really know. So you make a right or a wrong decision. You know, that's all that is. Uh, that's nice to see that. You always want to have accurate data being shown on your on your display. All right, guys, that's it. It's going to be interesting to see how this this game affects uh, the, these patch notes. Excuse me, affect the game. I think overall these are improvements. You know, they add to the game, which is what you want to see from a developer: is things being added to improve the experience of the people playing the game. And I don't think anything here was was took away from anything. It was all added, added and optimized, which is great. All right, guys, uh, this is uh, Mac Dabber. You can see me stream at twitch.tv slash Mac Dabber. Uh, check out my other videos. I got some videos on gliding distance. I got that ROE optimization video. And uh, I got some med kit stuff. And we're going to talk about a lot of other things in this, you know, about this game. And I love seeing these patch notes. You know, they give a lot of detail and they add things. And it, it's really also nice to see that they, I didn't translate this. This game is, you know, it shows the native language and then it also shows in English because they, they understand that a lot of English people um, like this game as well. So it's great to see that they're, that they, they're doing it for everybody. All right, guys. Um, I'll see you on the game. GG.